Ready 3D printed life here. <clears throat> and today I am bringing you a video on how to connect your 3D printer to your computer and have it work back and forth and print stuff. Cool, right? Okay, I lied. We're not going to be printing stuff yet. This is just connecting it and making the printer move when you issue commands over here. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure everything is wired up. Um, so, except for the fan, you don't need the fan yet. Um, so you need your thermistor, this is the white wires, your hot end, red wires, uh, extruder stepper, and then coming over here, your thermistor, here's the white wires, the thermistor, hot end is there on the end, uh, and then those four are all stepper motors, um, and then again the fan is optional, but it's right over here. Um, <clears throat> In the description will be a, uh, a download kit, which is still a work in progress, but it will be updated over time. Um, and in it, you will find a JPEG from the Kickstarter campaign of a more accurate um, layout of where all the wires go and which stepper motors go where, because I don't know offhand. Um, and I have this, the cable management, the cable wrap on it, so I cannot exactly tell. Uh, one thing to note is that... Uh, on your the power connector that connects the p power supply to your thing um, there's going to be two sets of two wires uh, in the image they are colored when you get them they most likely will not be the two wires that are on the side of the clip as you can hopefully see here they go to the positive terminal the other two go to the negative terminal the V minus output doesn't matter which one they, these are both the same for the V plus uh, the positive output, and these are both the same for the grounds. Now, when you get it, you will also just get a basically a power cord sort of thing, um, which is the end cut off. So what you have to do is you have to shave off a bit of this insulation, separate the three wires, strip them each separately, and then connect them in this order: black on the left, white in the middle, green on the right. <clears throat> once you do that, once you have everything wired up you can go ahead and plug in your micro USB cable. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if it makes much of a difference, but I've learned from the past from things like this, you want to always power it on first before plugging it in, just to avoid any errors. So when you plug this in, you should get a light on the power supply illuminated and a light on the board illuminated. Both should be green. Uh, you might have a different version of the board or power supply for some reason, so if it's not green, don't fret on there. If it's not green on here, you probably do have some kind of issue uh, because it does have other indicator lights that are uh, yellow and I believe red. So what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and plug this in. Now once you do so, you see along the bottom here an installing drivers little pop-up. Uh, obviously my drivers are already installed so <clears throat> I'm not going to see that. So just to reiterate, make sure everything is plugged in otherwise it won't work correctly make sure this is all wired correctly before you plug it in. Plug in the power supply first, then plug this into the computer. HGC one live stream, woohoo! Okay. What you're gonna do next is you are going to look to see if it installed correctly. I apologize for the shaky camera. I'm gonna do the best I can with what I've got at the moment. So if you go into your start menu, devices and printers, Scroll down and you should see one under unspecified. Now if this says something like this, USB serial communication, you're good, you don't have to do anything, congrats. If it says something like uh, COM port 9 and has a yellow triangle, then you gotta do something more. So what you're gonna wanna do, if that happens, is go into the kit. I have the kit right here. Uh, this is probably gonna be less than what you're gonna get. You're gonna get more in your kit, but, you know, same thing. You're going to take this serial install windows only, right click, run as administrator. You will see this and you will click install. Now it's going to pop up some kind of red window right here um, saying do you want to let the driver install? Say yes. <clears throat> now if it says it failed, it, yeah it didn't. <laughs> this is very important. If it says it failed, it means it failed. It means what you have to do is boot into your advanced mode. Now on Windows 8, this is pretty easy. What you're going to do is you're going to go into Settings, uh, Bottom, Change PC Settings, 
general scroll down reboot advanced I'm gonna just do that now so you can all see exactly what to do unplug this just for safeties whatever I'm gonna miss the live blog <laughs> There we go. Alright, so while this is going, I will just talk. Okay, it's done. <laughs> what you're going to do is you're going to go into Troubleshoot, Advanced Options, Startup Settings, and hit Restart. That's all you have to do. And that's going to make it so that you can install um, custom drivers that are not signed. Because, uh, for some reason, even when you run it as administrator, sometimes it won't let you install those. Um, okay, right, here it is. So what you want to do is disable driver signature enforcement, so you're going to hit key 7. And then it's just going to keep booting with the uh, driver signing disabled, which is what you want. Focus, there we go. <clears throat> okay, so we're back. It rebooted after a few seconds. It's a little bit slower than usual, but no big deal. You're going to go do the same thing. Open your kit, file, run as administrator, install. This time it should work and you should get a little prompt. And now after that what you're going to do is you're going to go into your control panel. I really apologize for the shakiness. I know it's going to be bad. Um, so you're going to do the same thing. Oh, it's not even plugged in. I want to make sure it's plugged in. Find it. Right click. Oh, sorry. Double click. Hardware. Double click this. Driver. Update driver. You should... Actually, no, I'm sorry. Scratch that. Do not do that. You want to go to all control panel options. Go to device manager. That's what you want to do. Now under COM ports, it should be, here it is, ports COM. Here, find it, uh, right click and hit update, or update driver software. Search automatically for updated software. Just click this, it will install no problem. After you do that, what you're gonna wanna do is unplug it and replug it. And at this point, it should work. Just to verify it works, you can go back to the devices and printer, scroll down, and make sure this doesn't have the yellow triangle. Now, if you still have the yellow triangle, even after installing the, the serial install file, then you probably have some other problem. All right, so now what you're going to do is you want to get it to be recognized in Repetier Host. So what you're going to do is open up, or it's Repetier something. I don't know how you say it. Open it up. Printer settings. Now, here's where you gotta change stuff. Uh, this first one should stay a serial connection. This second one, you're gonna hit refresh ports, drop down, and find the port that is the 3D printer. If you don't know which one it is and you have multiples, you can go back to the device manager and see which COM port it is. Change this baud rate to 2500, like I have here. Leave this on auto detect. Change this to disabled, and uh, leave this on whatever it was, and you can leave everything else. Um, now you can edit these settings on your own. Um, these are all different kind of preference settings. Uh, you don't want to touch them. Here's where you change the size of the the virtual bed that you see in this window, and these are the actual um, maximums of your printer. So it's not going to let you print anything bigger than this. Um, so, obviously, you should make these the same. That would make sense. <laughs> but um, I guess there are some exceptions as to why not you would want to. Hit OK. Once you're done with that, you're going to click this drop down. If you change those settings under default, just leave it default. If you made a new one, click that new one. And then it should connect. Now, it says it's connected because it says disconnect here. And there is a very good way to test that. Go into manual control. Here you will see your controls. Uh, take note, never hit these buttons. Do not click that or that or that or that ever. Don't click the home buttons. They are bad. They will kill your printer. 
not completely, but they will run it into its ends because it doesn't have end stops um, when it comes out of the box. So the first thing you're going to probably want to do is make sure your axes are right. So you want to move your gantry to the middle, your wide table to the middle, and make sure your Z has enough clearance here. And you're just going to want to start moving them by one millimeter steps. So move this one millimeter, one millimeter. And you can kind of hear it. Just like that. And that will verify that the x-axis works. Uh, make sure that when you click the x-axis on here, it's moving this one. Here is the y-axis, so same thing goes. Just make sure it's working. And then run it back. And Z. Z is going to be the slowest, so um, definitely be careful on how far you tell it to move because it's going to take a while. <coughs> All right. Now the final thing we're going to do before we can ensure that everything is connected, everything's working properly, is heat up the extruder. So right here, you can see it says heat extruder. You want to heat it to about 200 degrees Celsius. That may or may not be optimal printing temperature, but that doesn't matter at this point. Click Heat Extruder. This light will turn light blue. It will say Heating Extruder. And down here you will notice a temperature. Two temperatures, actually. The temperature it's at and the gold temperature. What you want to do is you just want to make sure that this, the thermistor is reading correctly. It should start around 20 to 30 Celsius and increase steadily about 3 degrees Celsius per second until it reaches its goal. You want to make sure it can hold steady on the desired temperature. There we go. You want to make sure it can hold steady on the temperature that it says it is. Uh, and then you just want to make sure that there's no clogs, so you're going to manually grab some of your filament and just push it through. You want to make sure this piece is a bit loose when you do that too, just so it doesn't... Oh, gas! <laughs> so it doesn't mess with it. Um, and if you push it through, you should get um, a bit of filament kind of curling out. It's probably going to curl up on itself, but that's okay. Um, as you use it more, it's going to eventually just kind of clear out whatever little gunk was left over in the nozzle when it was being manufactured. And it will eventually start to come out a lot cleaner. I'm not going to show that just because I know mine works, but really all you do is you push the filament down by hand. Excuse me. And once that works, you can shut off the extruder, or the... Oh, it does say extruder. Um, hot end, technically. And you are done. At this point, what do you do? You wait for my next video. I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.